I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Greetings and salutations in the name of our Lord. Welcome to another fabuloso day with Coffee, the Bible, and Page. I'm Page, your caffeine-inebriated host. And today we are going to continue our little journey into Leviticus. We're going to look at chapter 3, the fellowship offering, sometimes called the peace offering. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the three offerings we've talked about so far. The burn offering, which was concerned atonement. Uh, the... Uh, grain offering, which concerned giving thanks to God for his provision. And today we're going to be looking at uh, the fellowship or the peace offering, which is concerned primarily with um, celebrating the fellowship that we have with God. So let's just take a look at it. We're going to read it. You're going to find out it looks a lot like the burn offering. So let's go. Let's see what we got here. Chapter 3 of Leviticus. If your offering is a fellowship offering and you offer an animal from the herd, whether male or female, you are to present before the Lord an animal without defect. All right, one little difference here. It's male or female. If I'm not mistaken, up here in chapter 1, let's go to chapter 1 up here. Up here. All right. Um, All right, it says, it just says that the offering is supposed to be, if it's a burnt offering from the herd, a burnt offering from the flock. Yeah, with uh, the sheep or the goats, a male without defect. Um, and it's a male without defect if it's, a, if it's cattle. Okay, so there's a first difference here. This offering, the fellowship offering, uh, it can be male or female. Okay, got it. You're to lay your hands on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the presence to the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall splash its blood against the sides of the altar. Uh, from the fellowship offering, you're to bring a food offering to the Lord, the internal organs and all the fat that's connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar on top of the burnt offering that is lying on the burning wood. It is a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. If you offer an animal from the flock as a fellowship offering to the Lord, you'd offer a male or female, again, without defect. If you offer a lamb, you're to present it before the Lord, lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's son shall splash its blood against the sides of the altar. And from the fellowship offering, you're to bring a food offering to the Lord. It's fat, the entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone, the internal organs and all the fat that's connected to them, both kidneys with the fat and then near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. If your offering is a goat, you are to present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall splash its blood against the side of the altar. And from what you offer, you are to present this food offering to the Lord. The internal organs, all the fat that's connected to them, both kidneys with fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you shall remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering, a pleasing aroma, all the fat is the Lord's. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. You must not eat any fat or blood. Okay. I thought it was interesting. This It says here, uh, if you offer a goat, present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on his head and slaughter it. Okay, we got that. Aaron's son splashes the blood. From what you offer, 
In other words, out of this goat that you're offering, you present this food offering, the internal organs, the fat, kidneys, liver, uh, the choice parts of it. You offer that. Now, I'm, I'm, the language hints at the fact that they keep the rest. I'm not sure. We'll probably learn more about this. Leviticus has more about this as we go on. But what I want to focus on is we have the burnt offering, which has to do with atonement. Atonement comes with a price. That's what that sacrifice is about. You lay your hand on it, and then you slaughter the animal you bring. You dress it out, and then you bring it to the priests who burn it on the altar. And that's easy to see. Atonement comes with a price. When you lay your hand on it, you're identifying with that animal, which is about to die because of your sin. And then you are the one that slaughters it. Well, this is a picture of the sacrifice of Christ. Um, in effect, we slaughtered him. That's what that, that, this is a picture of that. Remember we said that uh, when we did, went through Exodus, how the tabernacle is a picture of the reality that that is out there. Well, the reality is this. The blood of Jesus being spilled on my behalf bought me atonement with God. And in the Old Testament, by laying your hands on the sacrifice, you are identifying with it, and you are recognizing that your sin is the reason this animal here is about to be slaughtered. Move forward several uh, millennia, and Christ is on the cross. Our sin is what slaughtered him. When you say, when you're identifying with this animal, you are recognizing the fact that you're the reason it's here. If there were no sin, there'd be no burnt offering. If there is no sin, Christ would not have had to die. So that's the significance of the burnt offering. Now the grain offering, that has to do with giving thanks to God for his provision. You'd bring, if some, a lot of times it's the first fruits of your harvest and you bring it. So the price you pay there is you are recognizing with the very best of what you have, or the first fruits, you're recognizing God's provision and you're giving this offering in faith that God is going to continue the harvest and that you will prosper. But it's a thanksgiving offering, giving thanks to God. Now, why should that, why should giving thanks to God cost something? The only thing I can think of is something my dad used to say to me years ago. And he says, something doesn't mean anything if it costs you nothing. Something doesn't mean anything if it costs you nothing. I'm a musician, all right? Um, I bought more than a few guitars in my life. And one lesson dad taught me about purchasing something like a musical instrument. He said, figure out what you can afford, then buy the next thing above that level. He says, it will mean more to you because it costs you. Thanksgiving has a price in order for it to mean anything. Uh, have you ever seen these people around these uh, famous uh, entertainers, musicians, whatever? They're just yes men. They just, they, they, are saying whatever they think the this artist or person, famous person wants to hear, and it's costing them nothing. It, it, their praise is empty and hollow. But you compare that to someone who sacrifices something of theirs in order to support this person. That person's opinion means something. Um, my wife, her opinion means everything to me, everything. I have seen the lengths to which she has gone 
to sacrifice of herself to make my house a home for my children and my and and myself. I've seen her sacrifice and therefore she can say things to me that nobody else can say because she's got skin in the game as my dad would call it. It means something when it costs you something. And really, you stop and think about all these sacrifices, that principle's in there as well. So I love what my dad said. Something will mean nothing unless it costs you something. Something to that effect. Make sense? Cool. Now, today's sacrifice, we're talking about a fellowship or peace offering. They call it, this, this translation calls it a fellowship offering. Other places, it translates it as peace offering. This is uh, celebrating the fact that we have peace with the God of the universe. We actually have fellowship with him. And again, this relationship costs something. Again, here, you lay your hand on the head of the animal you're bringing. You slaughter it. And you give a portion of this sacrifice to the priest who offers it on your behalf to God. Peace with God comes at a price. Again, it's the, it's the price of a substitutionary animal, right? A goat, a lamb, cattle, a cow, a bull. Um, here it can be male or female. The other one, the burnt offering has to be just male. Not sure what the significance of that is. But this peace offering also has a hint of celebration attached to it. There's, have you ever... Have you ever had someone that you really cared about be angry with you? And then when peace is reestablished, that sense of relief that comes, that inner joy that comes, because the person that you admire so deeply and you are at peace with each other. Again, I use the example of my wife because that's probably the most intimate example I have. She and I have had arguments in the past and we have fought vigorously at times throughout our marriage when we both feel strongly about something. But nothing is sweeter than whatever it is we're arguing about when it comes to a resolution and there's peace in the house. Peace with God costs something. And so when you bring an animal from your herd, from your flock, um, you're telling God, peace with you means so much that I'm willing to pay this price for it. And again, this would be a valuable price. Remember, I think I gave you the example of of that documentary I saw where a guy is raising American bison. Each bison cost is is worth $6,000. A pack of wolves took down one of his bison. That caught that that cost him six thousand dollars. So, um, sacrifice is all about the price that we pay, or that the Israelites would pay to have atonement with God, to celebrate His provision, and to celebrate the fact that there's peace, and that you have fellowship with God. That's a picture of everything around Christ, what he's done for us. Our sin was the reason that animal was slaughtered. And that person who had the sin slaughtered the animal. Christ was slaughtered. Christ was killed. The Lamb of God was sacrificed because of our sin. And in effect, it was as if we slaughtered him. That's why you can't can't buy the argument. Someone says, well, I wasn't there 2,000 years ago. I didn't put Jesus on the cross. Yeah, you kind of did. In fact, there's no kind of about it. You did. The person bringing the sacrifice slaughtered the sacrifice. But then even Christ paid the atonement. That means 
There's no longer a barrier between us and God. Our sins have been paid for. We've been redeemed. We've been bought with a price. But now there's also the added benefit of fellowship with God. We actually get to interact with the God of the universe. That price has been paid by Christ, the Lamb of God. So do you see how these uh, these sacrifices are all a picture of uh, centering around what Christ has done for us. Even the grain offering, the Thanksgiving offering, it costs. What does it cost? Something of yours. We give our first fruits, your tithes and your offerings. Um, my wife and I, we like to practice uh, extemporaneous giving. When we see a need for somebody, we try to meet it if we're able, if, if we're in a position to be able to. And we've at times given away furniture. We actually gave away a car once because we feel that that's the least we can do for God who gave everything for us. So there you go. That's today's devotional. Um, I'm really, you know, it's, it's funny. Going through the New Testament, I started to see an overall message coming together that coalesced into this, love God, love your neighbor. That's the central message of the New Testament. Jesus says those are the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbors yourself. Upon all these, upon these two hang all the law and the commandments. And then all the epistles are just the uh, written description of what that looks like in different situations in our lives. I'm beginning to see that the overriding message of the Old Testament, for me, is that the Ten Commandments are like a wedding covenant. If I'm truly the Lord your God and we have a relationship, you and I, then as a result of that relationship, you will have no other gods before me. And now I'm looking at the sacrifices and I'm beginning to see how all of these center around the person of Christ, how he is the embodiment of what these sacrifices are a picture of. Atonement comes with a price. Our worship of God has a price attached to it. Your words of praise mean little to nothing if you don't have skin in the game. That's the grain offering. The peace offering, peace with God comes with the price. Fellowship with God comes with the price. We've not only been redeemed, but we're allowed to speak with him, to fellowship with him, to commune with him. So I'm kind of excited. I can't wait to see what the, what the remaining chapters of the Leviticus hold for us. Well, that's enough for today. I hope you have a fabulous day tomorrow, Leviticus chapter four. Have a great day. Bye-bye. 